Good morning. Um, uh, welcome to the 10th meeting in 2016 of the SPPA committee. Can I can remind everyone to switch off mobile phones and other electronic devices as they may interfere with the broadcasting. Agenda one uh, on a, uh, our agenda today is um, decision on taking business in private. Uh, so get, can I have agreement from the members that item five will be taken in pri private uh, to discuss the evidence heard from the Commission of Parliamentary Reform? Great. Great, thank you very much. Second item to, for the committee today is to take evidence on a proposed cross-party group and a uh, very warm well welcome to Miles Briggs to the committee this morning. Uh, proposed CPG is on Scottish horse racing and bloodstock industries and I would invite the member to make an opening statement. Thank you, convener, and uh, good morning to the committee, and thank you for the opportunity to address you this morning. In 2015, the horse racing industry in Scotland continued to make a considerable contribution to the Scottish economy. Direct annual expenditure has been estimated at £55 million, with a wider economic benefit at approximately £173 million. The sport itself helps to maintain a total of some 870 full-time equivalent employees here in Scotland, both directly and indirectly, playing a vital part in Scotland's buoyant leisure industry. The popularity of horse racing in Scotland at the five race courses at Musselburgh here in my region, Perth, Kelso, Eyre and Hamilton continues to grow with over 308,000 attendees last year. With spectator numbers in Scotland increasing by 13% since 2012, reflecting the ongoing promotional activities of the race courses, now makes race, horse racing in Scotland Scotland's second most attended spectator sport. The purpose of the cross-party group on Scottish horse racing and bloodstock industries would be to promote a better understanding for members of the Scottish Parliament of horse racing and the breeding of horses for export and import for the sport within the Scottish economy, jobs market, tourism industries, sport events and festivals, as well as helping to realise the future economic opportunities horse racing and the bloodstock industries present to Scotland. I welcome the opportunity to address the Standards Committee this morning and hope the committee will consider the pro proposal I'm putting forward for a cross-party group positively and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Can I invite any questions? Yes, Mr Stewart. Thank you, Convena. Thank you, Mr Briggs. I was surprised to find that it was the second largest sport uh, myself, but uh, my question is that you, you, you plan to deal with and possibly introduce and amend any uh, negative impact that could have... What, what type of examples would you have of that in reality? In terms of the group, I think what we're looking to do is actually have an oversight around legislation which is coming around horse racing and bloodstock industries in Scotland and at a UK level. I hope the committee will present, hopefully an op um, the, uh, the cross-party group will present an opportunity to link in with the, the other cross-party group which exists in Westminster. So we have that communications which to date haven't really existed. But above all, I think for, for areas coming forward, for example, around the movement of horses, um, with Britain leaving the European Union, that's an issue which is already um, generating some discussion within the industry. And I think hopefully this will present a forum that MSPs can understand these issues better. And, and from that, we'll all be more informed about the whole process uh, and the group will then bring things to this parliament and, and other groups as well uh, to make sure that we're all getting the, yep. the full information uh, from the process. I hope so. Thank you, convener. Okay. Are there any further questions? Yeah, Mr Scott. Uh, just what sort of meetings do you expect to hold? What sort of subjects do you expect to discuss at your meetings? Um, from the and, early and I should declare an interest, um, convener, because I intend to be part of this, representing yep. here as I do. I know, as a, um, having air in your constituency um, is a, a key key aspect of your local economy, and I think that's really where the the focus for the group will be, actually, on the economic benefits to racing in Scotland, which perhaps aren't as widely known, and the the opportunities which we're not actually realising in Scotland around horse racing. So I hope um, that will be a key aspect of it, especially around how we promote um, the horse racing industry in Scotland. We have a great offer, which unlike Ireland, where maybe not uh, capitalising on. So I think that's something the group will want to look at quite early on and how um, Scotland's tourism bodies are actually working with Scottish racing to promote that. But I think there's lots of wide, uh, wide ranging areas around sport, it's the sport itself, and also in tourism. Um, so I hope once the committee gets um, 
hopefully approval, once the cross-party group gets approval from the committee, we can look at um, putting together a strong agenda which will take into account all these issues. Thank you. Mr Johnson. So we're just looking through your submission to the committee, uh, and I, uh, I don't really see any mention here of, of uh, animal welfare. Um, is that not something of an omission? Um, not really, because the Scottish Parliament already has a cross-party group on animal welfare, which I'm a member of. Um, I think I'd be probably in inclined to say that there will always be crossovers between the cross-party group on sport and also on animal welfare, but I think these will be separate issues. Likewise, there's a cross-party group on tourism, I believe. But I think specifically for the, racing, the horse racing industry and bloodstock industry, which has no real voice um, within the animal welfare group, um, then there's an opportunity for this cross-party group to actually um, consider these groups and give that voice here in our parliament. I mean, I just, I mean, while I, I accept that, I also accept the, 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 the assumptions here and the, 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 sort of the, the, the understandings about um, the impact of the economy uh, from horse racing, given that it is uh, an activity so reliant on animals, surely at least sort of some acknowledgement of the importance of the welfare of those animals would be important uh, as part of your considerations, even if it's not one of your primary considerations. Um, I think it could do. I think probably it would fit more within the animal welfare cross-party group. And as a member of that, I know that's been raised um, on their agenda for the future already. Um, so I think maybe that's where we can make sure um, horse welfare in Scotland is considered within the parliament for MSPs. Uh, Mr. Murphy. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, I was uh, going to touch on animal welfare as, as well. There are clearly some uh, aspects of the, 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 the discussions around the industry which wouldn't necessarily be voiced by the industry uh, in, in terms of, of animal welfare and other ethical issues as well. There are uh, a number of concerns that have been reported around, uh, for example, tax avoidance in the, the gambling industry more widely. Um, I'm just wondering how you intend to cast the net as wide as possible in terms of external members uh, of the group. There's only one list at the moment, which is Scottish Racing Marketing Limited. Um, it, it seems to me reasonable to say that cross-party groups are not intended to be uh, voices of commercial interests. They're supposed to bring together a group of people who want to discuss a topic from a, diff a range of different perspectives, not just those who represent the industry itself. How do you intend to uh, ensure the widest membership of external organisations who have an interest in the subject, but not necessarily from the perspective of the industry? Sure. Well, following what I hope would be the approval from the committee, um, I would want to see all interested parties invited. Um, and certainly I know within um, the the five race courses in Scotland, they already have a network of people who they work with who are very keen to see this established. Um, so like with all cross-party groups, I think it's important that it's fully accessible to anyone who wants to come along to it. And I'd hope that we'd be able to take that forward as a cross-party group. Thank you. Any further questions? Oh, um, can I thank you for thank your you attendance much. this morning. Um, we will consider the cross-party group agenda item four and inform you of it. Um, decision as soon as possible. So thank you very much. I'm just going to suspend for a few minutes to let the witnesses change over. A uh, very uh, warm welcome to the committee to Emma Harper. Um, uh, Emma is proposing a cross-party group on lung health and I would invite you to make an opening statement to the committee. Good morning. Thanks everybody for allowing me to come and speak today. Um, breathing is something we all do, day in, day out, every day of our lives. It's so innate that most of us rarely stop to think about it. But for millions of people across the UK, breathing is something that they have had to think about. And these are people that whom the beautiful but delicate organs we, we use to breathe, our lungs, they don't work as they should. 
One in five people in the UK have been diagnosed with a lung disease, and every year over half a million more people are told they have a lung disease. It continues to be a major factor in health inequalities, and someone from the most deprived section of society is two and a half times more likely to have COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and nearly twice as likely to develop lung cancer as someone in the least deprived section of society. Overall, the burden that lung disease places on our nation's health and our health services is immense, on a par with non-respiratory cancer and heart disease. Yet the amount of resources and attention invested in tackling lung disease trails behind these other areas. So for me, the creation of a new cross-party group on lung health would allow for discussion of the prevention, care and treatment of respiratory health between members of the Scottish Parliament, people affected by lung conditions, third sector organisations and healthcare professionals. So rather than have one cross-party group for asthma, one for COPD, one for mesothelioma or interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, I'm proposing that one cross-party group is um, created that would look at lung health of Scotland um, as a matter of uh, concern. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I invite any questions, Mr Johnson? Um, first of all, can I just thank you for, for bringing forward this proposal. Uh, you know, as someone who uses uh, an inhaler occasionally, I think you know, these are issues and have, uh, you know, for people with more acute conditions in mind, really uh, significant impacts on their daily lives. Um, one issue which I was just wondering if you'd considered uh, looking at was the, the impact from uh, urban pollution, in particular, you know, thinking about the recent um, uh, uh, European Environment Agency reports um, <clears throat> and proposals from various cities to ban diesel cars. I think you know this is a, a you know a, a growing issue. And I was just wondering if any thought had been given to, to looking at particulates and nitrous oxides and, and urban pollution like that. Absolutely, um, the group rather than look at individual um, disease processes, were looking at themes. So the theme of air pollution and air quality has been one of the um, issues identified. And I'm already a member of a subgroup uh, of air, air quality as part of the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee. So we're looking at that through the um, established committee and it will be one of the themes that we would propose to address in the cross-party group as well. Any further questions? Oh, um, uh, can I thank the, the member for her um, statements this morning? Uh, we'll consider the cross-party group uh, later in our agenda and we'll inform you of the decision as quickly as possible. So thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. Okay. Um, we'll now suspend briefly again to let um, witnesses change over. Thank you.